Let's go on a high-flying adventure examining Disney Planes Dark Side knockoff toys. I'll show you how dangerous these clone planes are by putting them through some quality control tests with Mr. Hammer and Mr. Blender. And remember boys and girls, don't attempt to do any of the silliness you see in this video at home. There's plenty of air crash investigations after these nasty clones crash land. So prepare for takeoff, this flight's going to get a little bit bumpy. Well hello there, welcome to the world of knockoff toys and I've got some planes toys to show you. Here they come. Is that El the Mexican guy? Is that uh, Dusty? I keep getting it confused. I quite often call him Krusty. Please correct me if I get it wrong. And is that Bravo? Uh, I do have some real toys to make some, some comparisons to, but I'm going to struggle with this one because I know very little about these toys. Well, these knockoff planes toys were some of the first I saw on the market, and it was months and months ago when I picked these up. You can see it's $7. It's telling me it's ages 3 plus. Although I would say no children should be playing with these, and that is the artwork on the back of the box. Oh yes, it's quite interesting. Uh, there's been a lot of these toys hit the markets. Uh, they're very popular. I do know they say sell, the knockoff toys it is. But I'm not so sure about how popular the film is. Hey, these look sort of cute, and there's some cards here as well. Okay, let's take a look at these cards. The first one says Skipper. Looks like that on the front. Then on the back, I only assume that this is artwork derived from the real film. Although I wouldn't know, there's uh, Bravo and Echo. I think that's their correct names. And that guy again. Boo hoo. Just so we can get our head around how bad those knockoff toys are, I have actually bought some of the Real McCoy toys, the licensed toys. I've got um, Dusty. Oh, I hope I'm, <laughs> I'm going to fail, aren't I? Uh, that guy there, I don't know if it's the same style, but I don't know if it's the same character. And I definitely think that's the, uh, the Mexican one. Well, at least with these real toys, it gives me some education into some of their names. It's going to help me make this video. And there's another box there. Bravo Neko, wasn't it? And I'm very curious to see just how good and stunning this is versus the rubbish which is down there. Well, these real toys in Australia, they cost $10 each. They're probably a lot less in the USA. It's really pointless me telling you how much I pay for toys because elsewhere in the world, quite often the toys are far less expensive. Wow, this actually looked very nice. It's got a nice feel to it. Very impressive indeed. So what's really important in the equation here is the fact that it's cost me $30 for three of these toys, the, the legitimate ones, versus $7 for three of the knockoffs. Hey, and that one looks very nice as well. Well, this is a real Dusty here. It's my son's. It was his, well, one of his Christmas presents from last year. I must admit, it's quite a nice toy. It's nice looking. It's got some interesting details. A little skull and crossbones there. The propeller spins. Little wheels on it turn. It's a combination of metal and plastic. There's a lot of plastic in this. Uh, or even though it is fairly heavy, I dare say, is that the bulk of the metal is in that uh, middle body section. It's a shame it doesn't have a name under it because people like me are going to struggle to understand which is which. But then again, the cars toys suffer the same fate. But you know what? It's cute. My son loves it. And you know, so do I. Well, let's take a flying leap at this first one. I'm going to call it El Chupa Chup because I can't say the name. That is the knockoff one. This is the real planes toy. And I'll spin it around slowly and you can just study the differences in details between the two. The one in the foreground there is the real McCoy and it looks nice, you know. I dare say it looks exactly what you see in the film. And here comes the knockoff looking pretty D darn nasty indeed. One very curious detail is the fact that it says planes on this propeller here, but I, well, it does spin, but it's very stiff. I'd hate to uh, put any effort on that. I dare say those little things would break off, or in time would just go. It's feeling a bit flimsy already. Oh, <laughs> welcome to the dark side. It just popped straight off. And I bet you if I put a bit of effort into this big Hamilton stand propeller on the real toy, I bet you it's not going to come off. I can make it bend and flex. But she's not going to come off. And there's a bit of an in-hand appraisal of this knockoff chopper chop. Looks like it's jet powered about its propeller now. Look at that, there's a turbine at the front there. But if we look underneath, we start to see some very, very nasty activity going on there. There's absolutely no strength in this toy. If a child was playing with this, it would be... Well, look at this, I can just basically pull it apart. Hey guys, you know what I'm going to say now? Welcome to the dark side. I bet you those little wheels can pop straight out. Oops! Mummy, Johnny just choked on that little toy plane you bought down at the cheapo markets. It just goes to show you, not all planes are made the same. 
Well, here's the very expensive military jet guy. I'm not going to go into names because I'll just get into trouble. That's the real McCoy, licensed one in the front there. It looks beautiful, that plane. Look at the detail on that. Smashing. And around comes the dark side one. And it's just, well, I can't say those words on YouTube because we're G-rated and child-friendly. But it's a nasty piece of work. Well, I'm just looking at the real planes toy here. It's very nice indeed. This is Bravo. Hope I'm right. <laughs> The bits which you'd think would break off are flexible. It's a combination of plastic and metal. It's interesting, it's got a retracting nose gear here, but the main gear doesn't move. Maybe it's part of the story, I don't know. I notice there's skull and crossbones going across a lot of these things, so maybe that's part of the story. It would help if I saw the movie, wouldn't it? But overall, that's a very, very nice looking toy indeed. Meanwhile, up the other end of town, it's not a very nice story. This is nasty, like the one we just looked at, the Mexican guy. It is literally falling apart in my hands. And I've got a new fate for these little planes after we look at the next one. Well, here's a look at the knockoff Dusty. Is this one? That's the real McCoy toy in a bit of a turnaround comparison. And I dare say, considering I haven't seen the movie, the little guy goes from zero to being hero. Seems to always be the case in these films. But it's interesting, Dusty being the lead character, has he got the charm of, let's say, Lightning McQueen? Has he got that, the mojo? The Lightning McQueen has. I mean, he's gone a long way. But will this little chap make it as well? Time will tell. Well, here's the knockoff Dusty in a bit of an in-hand appraisal. Quite interesting. You know, obviously the eyes are an important detail in these planes. D7. Would 7 be like Lucky 7? Is it that corny that they've done a number 7 for the star? Or is there some other reason behind that? I'm not sure. I think, that, once again, the skull and crossbones seems to be a continuing theme across these. Um, D7... But does he lose his wings in it and get new ones? I think that's part of the story, or maybe I'm totally wrong. I dare say someone's going to inform me to reasons why he is what he is. Well, just like the other knockoffs we just had a look at, this is about to fall apart in my hands. I don't have to do much to show you just how dangerous this toy is. The little propeller will probably fly off as well if I give it a bit of a twerk. Yep, there it goes. Imagine choking on that. I mean, seriously. Um, and yet these things sell quite well which is very sad to report. What would normally happen at this point is I'd introduce my friend Mr. Hammer and he would come in and go tap, tap, tap to show us the quality behind these toys. But I've had a few complaints, so I'm going to introduce a new friend. That's not a spooky UFO, boys and girls. This is a very cheap blender from Aldi and it might be nice to do a version of Planes Will It Blend? da 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 Let's load the planes in. You know, it's funny with YouTube, people will complain about things, and people complained about Mr. Hammer. And what was funny was the people who complained about Mr. Hammer, well, guess what? Their channels were blank channels. So what's that telling me about the people who make these major complaints? Yeah, some things never change on YouTube, do they? wonder how these guys are going to go at getting the chop. Well, if Blendtec are allowed to do it, surely I am as well. Let's hope Mr. Blendtec can get me a better blender than this one. Three, two, one. Whoa! That was a full power. Woo wee! Whoa! That's some pretty serious prop wash. Well, it certainly looks like the Aldi blender has survived, but how is it blended? Well, there's the plane wreckage. I bet you Mr. Blendtec's blender would do a far better job. And don't forget, boys and girls at home, don't attempt to do anything like this with your mum's stuff in the kitchen. Ah, knock off plain smoke. Don't breathe that, it could really harm you. And what is quite amazing here, quite large chunks of those very nasty knockoff planes actually survived the blender. Well, onwards and upwards we go. Here are two nasty knockoffs. Each of those was $4. I think it's Bulldog and Zed. I hope I'm correct there. And they portray all of the hallmarks that you will find in nasty, nasty knockoff toys. Let's take a look at the packaging around this knockoff Bulldog. It's quite interesting. It was some of the first that I got, so down there is true. Completely new to the market, blah, blah, blah. And here is some of the others that I saw in this range. And yes, I did see most of those other characters, but I only purchased a couple of them. Let's be assured, it's the 100% wonderful. Well, let's do a bit of unboxing here. Very important to say the word unboxing. Very important word. 
And it's interesting, uh, I had someone recently say to me that by doing these videos I was basically promoting these nasty uh, knockoff toys and I actually was actually quite offended by that. I don't like that being said and I make it very clear in these videos that these are um, well rubbish as you can see. It's, it's literally fallen apart um, before we go further, it's just fallen on the ground. Um, you know, maybe these people are not watching the videos, they're just saying, oh Leo's putting up all these videos of, um, you know, unlicensed toys. I've actually helped a toy company pull some unlicensed toys uh, from eBay, and they're very appreciative of my help, and it's actually through another YouTuber who contacted me. Let's see if this one fares any better out of the box. Oh, its wings are going to stay on, only just. Um, but as you can see, this is very low in stuff. Well, I'm thinking that Zed, I don't know if it's a good guy or a bad guy because I know nothing about this. Seems to be this theme of skull and crossbones on these planes. And here is the bulldog. And as you saw, it fell apart coming out of the, the packaging. That was not set up, guys. This is what you're dealing with when you're buying these toys. It looks like these toys have got a thing where you pull them back, makes it sound like that, and they'll take off and fly. Oh, not until they have a crash. Now I keep saying Zed because I'm looking at the Real McCoy pack packaging here. There's a picture of Zed. Do you reckon that's Zed there? Or am I just totally uh, got it out of whack? Well, there's a bit of an in-hand appraisal. Yeah, it's got a spinning propeller of sorts. It's got a bit of an undercarriage thing going on here. That's just a dolly wheel at the front there. It's got the, as I showed before, it does propel itself along the uh, ground. It's got some artwork here. It's got the skull and crossbone on the back. It's got some wings that uh, are just going to break off that easily. Uh, we saw that on the Bulldog, so this one's the same, just took a little bit more effort to get it off. The, the Bulldog fell, off, fell apart straight out of the packaging. I think I'm going to have to bring out an old friend to sort these guys out. And here's Bulldog, and if he's saying, oh, where's his wings, Leo? Well, you may have skipped through this video and seen a very important part to as why this model has no wings. It looks like a shark to me, look at that. Does, is it like a Finding Nemo and Planes sequel coming up soon? Can Ellen Degenerates um, do that one for us? Interesting, yeah, Bulldog, British Bulldog, haha. -ha. Uh, very sort of cliched, isn't it? There we go, put the wings back on. Look, it's even got a new design. There you go. I told you I could design planes. Oh, not quite. Well, actually, I've just noticed something you can do with these planes. You can do a bit of mix and matching, can't you? You can rip the wing off that one, put it on there. There we go. Put that wing over there. Oh, hours of, hours of fun for the boys and girls doing that. Oh, let's get the hammer. I've had enough. Okay, watch out guys, this is going to be one very bumpy landing in three, two, one. Well, something tells me you guys need to see the air crash investigators. Well, the first thing to note is the new way that I'm holding my GoPro inside the frame there with a whole lot more blue tack seems to have worked. If I smack that, that's a $400 hit. Going along to the wreckage, this was down on the ground. It's the top of the bulldog. Not looking so British at the moment. There's a wing there going along. And that, I think, was the little engine part, the motor part of the bulldog. It's now been exposed for its cheap and nastiness. Going up the back here, there's a bit of prop wash here. There's the motor from one of the other ones, seems to be intact, it's scooted away. They say the slow motion will reveal what happened there. <gasps> Guess what's happened? The Angry Birds are taking a dive, as per usual, and the moose! Look at that, that scary moose has jumped down every time that moose jumps down on these things. There's a bit more wreckage there over here. Some more wreckage there is another trashy, which has come from I don't know where, the slow motion will reveal where. That was actually down on the ground, it jumped from somewhere to survive. And that's basically the crash scene investigation of this most horrible planes accident. And considering Mr. Hammer has caused so much controversy of late, do we want Mr. Hammer to stay, or do we want Mr. Hammer to disappear? If you'd like her to disappear, please leave a comment and explain why you have a problem with Mr. Hammer. Well, this next one's quite a curious one. I actually picked it up at my local Westfield, being Westfield Hornsby. You know, what's in interesting is that some very curious toys turn up at these shopping centres where the policy is, well, basically... Um, no nasty stuff. I'll ask my daughter, do you think this is real or fake? Do you think it looks good? Or do you think it looks a bit um, shonky? It looks good, but um, well, you can't really tell from it if it's real or fake. But the key is if it's not like licensed or anything. But how can you tell that? Like as someone looking at it in the shops, how could you tell? 
Do you know where to look? Well, the price. Yeah, but this the... is like ten dollars, so it could be fake. That's right. On the back here, they've actually written here that it was bought at a, a Westfield shop. That was only ten dollars. How much do you think that would be if it was in Target or Kmart? I said like that. Twenty or twenty-five. Yeah. Or you think maybe it's a bit... seventeen. What about the packaging? How does it present? Does it look like planes to you? Well. Actually, if you look closer, it's more of like a looking cartoon look instead of the 3D looks as, um, as they do in the movie. Mm. So, but overall, the yeah. packaging, do you, think it, do you think it's saying planes to you? Would, you know, at, let's say if you, did, you weren't quite sure, would you be easily fooled by that packaging? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where a lot of this is at. And it's interesting that that was purchased at Hornsby uh, Westfield, which is a little bit sad that... Um, the dark side things are creeping in, and yes, it was only ten dollars for how many planes? One, two, three, four. four. You know, like I've said many times before, much of the um, grandeur of these toys is the packaging. They do their best to try and emulate what you will find in a real planes toy. There are, I think, sets of four and die cast that you can buy of these. Or I should say die cast and plastic. But quite often you'll see like a group of signs like this, and to me, this sort of shouts, you know, knockoff. Um, and the fact that it's ten dollars, I mean, that's the other key thing and I think I've got my theory about why there's been the massive flood of knockoffs in Australia apart from the fact that there seems to be no one chasing this down but toy prices in Australia are very high in like compared to the USA so if you're landing knockoffs in Australia you've got a very good opportunity to actually pull a much better price at selling them and we're going to take a bit of a look at these guys in here it seems to be some popular characters there um, here they come Oh, one's got a double propeller there. These seem to be a better quality at first appraisal than the ones that I've been looking at in this video. Let's get them out. One interesting thing here is look at the box artwork here. It looks like a landing strip of sorts. A lot of work in the boxes. And I'll do a bit of an in-hand appraisal. This one's what I call El Chapa Chup. I think it's a Mexican guy. He's got his whatever flying out the back there, number five. Looks like something from Wacky Races to me. A little bit. Remember Wacky Races? Oh man, I loved that show when I was a kid. I just wish they'd make the Hollywood film of that. I don't know why they haven't done that. Here's the real McCoy guy. If I bring him in. And it's interesting scale, these ones. These are a better build. That's the real one I'm shaking there. Don't get confused. Please don't get confused. I'd hate that to happen. Um, but as you can see, it's actually a fairly good representation in this knockoff uh, of this toy. It's got a pullback action. But sadly, like all knockoffs, I really feel like I could sort of, um, you know, break pieces off this very easily. And then, there you go. Okay. So, even though it looks half decent, this is still a killer toy. This one's got quite a fruity pullback action. It's quite a speedster. Whoa! Oh, we've had a stack. Well, this is a knockoff of, I think it's Rip Slinger, is the character. I just know that because I'm looking at the packaging of, <laughs> of the real McCoy stuff. It's got a double twin blade thing here. I wonder what... Is it a Russian guy? I'm not a... Oh, look, I'm going to get into danger, I know, because I don't know what I'm talking about. It's got the pullback action, it's got a bit of a thing, and it's probably got some part that's going to break off easily if I manipulate it well enough. There we are. I told you it would. Fancy that, eh? Um, but nevertheless, they, these do present very well, and that's what's a little bit sad. And I'm even looking closer now. It even says his name on the side of number 13. Wow, who was writing this film? Let's check out number 13's pullback action, making the right noises, then fly! Oh, had a stacko. Well, next up, it's fairly fancy looking at silver. It's either Bravo or Echo, or maybe there's another character I do not know about. Uh, it's a jet fighter, obviously. It's got two engines. And if I point out anything else, which is very obvious, you'll probably you know, knock me down with a stick. It's been fairly poorly painted underneath. You can just see the silver's barely hit that bottom bit there. And um, But, you know, the thing is that on initial look at this, it looks very impressive. It's only when you get in your hands, you start to realise it's nothing but rubbish. Well, let's see if this one flies in the pullback and fly. Oh, that was a, just a kiss. That wasn't a crash. And here's Dusty. I nearly said crusty then. And I think um, what is interesting is that, considering this is a Disney film, what I do notice is that um, yeah, Disney grabbed hold of Star Wars not that long back, and I see a lot of knockoff Star Wars stuff now. 
didn't see that before. So there's something about Disney stuff where the people who make the knockoff toys just seem to hone in and go for it. Well, we can't keep you on the ground all the time. Let's let you have a fly and fly. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, excuse me. Four little planes sitting in a row. Four little planes sitting in a row. But the one little hammer should accidentally fall. There'll be no little plane sitting in a row. Well, let's come in for a crash scene investigation. Someone's had a bit of a rough landing here. The planes um, didn't break up that much, actually. There's the bottom of the um, El Mexicano, El Chum Chum, whatever his name is. There's the uh, the thing that propels them along, and I've totally forgotten its name. There is there's um, Rusty, Rusty Dusty, whatever his name is. There's uh, Echo or whatever Bravo. Got a smack of the side, looks like it's well, somehow half of it survived. And more of the things that the Angry Birds have somehow stayed up, except for a pig has fallen. Well, whatever that there has taken a bit of a dive. But uh, all in all, considering I gave them a pretty good whack, um, you can sort of see they've stayed intact. And it does show you that they're a little bit, um, how would I say it, a better knockoff than the other ones we looked at. You know, I was just doing a body count and I've just realized something. There's one, two, three crusties there but this guy here has uh, winged it in that direction because i gave it a second hit it was over here and it's gone in high velocity in that direction i went around the workshop floor and all i found was this i found that but i think it's from the earlier hit that i gave in this video and i found those there i think that's part of the tail plane too this guy here and they were a long way from the table so it's amazing how much um energy that hammer puts into stuff and gets it motivated. I did find the undercarriage, one, two, three, four, but for the time being this guy's having a holiday and I can't find him. Well all the items on the table there were all purchased at the same shop and it's one that I know is, well, renowned for knockoff stuff, but is all of this stuff knockoff? And let's take a look and see if we can tell. Okay, first up, let's take a look at this uh, Lightning McQueen plush. It's one which has got a suction cup. You can stick it up in a window or whatever in your car. It looks pretty cool. It was only $10. <clears throat> Straight away, when I think of $10 and see something like this, I think, hmm, it could be a knockoff. It looks almost too good to be true. It's got a label like that. It looks authentic, doesn't it? But is it? This is the thing. Considering where I purchased it, I don't understand why this toy was in there amongst so many other knockoff toys. Let's take a look at the next one. It's a Despicable Me Minion, whatever you want to call them. My son calls them M&Ms. You can see it was ten dollars. Um, the packaging alone just shouts to me knock off. I don't think that's a that one's a no-brainer in a sense. Uh, there's nothing going back to the people who own uh, that one there. The Despicable Me character. Let's look at this bag very quickly. It's another little minion. They've got names, but I have got no idea what this guy's name is. It was $10, there's a tag on it somewhere. I'm not going to define me now. There it is there. Uh, it's a knockoff. I can't find any tag around the seam. Um, there's nothing inside. I'm sure because when I purchase or something, straight away, $10 for that. If, if it was licensed, it would probably be a little bit more expensive. If they made something like this, but who knows if they did or they didn't. Let's take a look at Dusty here. This is an interesting one because um well it's got this big tag on the back actually you know this but i've got some dolls that were made by these people in another collection i've got applause it's got that tag and the other flip side looks like that it was ten dollars as you can see in the straight away i'm thinking ten dollars mm, considering where i purchased it mm. uh, like i said th there can be some furfies in these shops I mean, there's something a bit strange about this one here and it's got number seven here and but there's nothing on the other side 
Uh, there's one on the wing, but there's nothing here. I don't know. I've seen some other ones of these guys, and when he does have a seven here, this, it tends to be on both sides, but who knows, because I don't fully understand the story. It's got a music feature. Hmm. I'll just stop there. And it's interesting. It's got this sort of bit of rough stitching. I dare say they've poked the music feature in there. That's something I see a lot with knockoff stuff, where they unstitch and they put in a little thing that will laugh or something. I don't know about that tune. I don't understand who, what that tune belongs to. I don't know. It just seems... The finishing on this <clears throat> just doesn't seem right. But, strangely enough, there's, you know, there's things on this which has a calling card saying that it's real. It's, you know, I get thing, items like that and I can't ever bring them to, like, to a video and say... This is legit, or this is knockoff, but the audience will possibly be able to tell me. Um, remembering that was ten dollars, and I'm sort of thinking, wow, for ten dollars, it almost seems too good to be true. Down at my local pharmacy or chemist shop or drugstore, as some people may say, I found this little um, dusty. It's quite interesting. It seems to be fairly lacking in detail. It was a bubble bath one where you unscrew his tail and there was bubble mix in there. You have fun in the bath with him. He's not coming off at the moment because he's playing up on me because he's in front of camera. It does have a copyright on it. It says it's copyright Disney underneath. And it's sort of all this other blah blah, you know. Obviously it's made in China. But it's funny, when I first saw that, I thought, wow, you know, that's a knockoff. It just, you know, it looked like a knockoff to me because of the lack of details. A little bit abstract, but the funny thing is that this is the sort of thing thinking on the collecting scheme, let's say if you were collecting this character, these are the ones you want to grab because these are the ones that'll end up being trashed, possibly thrown out. Um, people tend to get the bubble bath ones and they tend to be the ones that'll be the ones that'll be collectible in the future. I know if my Thomas ones, the bubble bath ones, a few that I've got are very cherished, but that's my little tip on that one. But nevertheless, when I first saw that, I thought it was a knockoff, but my true belief is it's actually a licensed product. Well, let's squeeze in one more. This is one that's got the little model plane, it's got some sort of phone, and there's something else in there as well, which we'll find out when we open it up. Uh, it's got artwork on the back like that. It only cost me $7, and there are lots of characters in these. There's um, Dusty. I believe that's Zed. I hope I'm right there. I've got all the markings, I hope, of Zed. Same thing, you got a phone, something in there as well, and either Echo or Bravo or Delta or whatever that plane there is. Same deal. Let's have a very quick look at these, and let's um, give them a blend, eh? Well, let's get into a bit of unboxing. For some reason, people like to see this. There's that weird thing, something get, that goes around your wrist or something. Maybe you wear, I don't know, the phone or something. On that, you know, it's interesting. The shops that I go to, the people sort of know me. They see me all the time coming through, buying this stuff. And just recently, they, they, they ask me, what happened to you? They don't recognize me anymore. And they, they think I'm sick. They think, you know, oh, he's the poor person's lost a lot of weight. And I said, no, I went on this sort of weird McDonald's diet. And um, I explained to them, you know, what happened. I said, wow. But it's interesting. I've changed so much now that people don't recognize me. Mind you, looks like these toys are going to recognize the blender very soon. Well, it looks like we've got three very dodgy planes. These are very similar to the ones we looked at earlier in the video. They are very, very, you know, low quality. They'll just break apart very easily. We've got these um, wristband things. I think these go around your wrist and they attach then to this thing here which looks like it's got a sound chip. Let's take a listen to one of these. Well, there's a nice close look at this thing. I suppose if you're four years old, you'd be quite excited by that. I'm sort of excited. Well, I'm, you know, a bit weird. Pull out that. Wonder what sound this is going to make. <laughs> what is that? Got a light going on there. That just sounds weird to me. Anyone know that tune? Before I get a DMCA. Doesn't make any other sound. I should put one of these in the blender as well, eh? What do you reckon? Nasty business, isn't it? At least it wasn't a choo-choo sound. Very different, very loud too, these things. Um, yeah, okay, let me get the blender out. I don't think we need to see much more of that. We've seen those before. Look at that sticker placement there. There's a sticker Friday on that one. There's that guy there. What was I say? Zed, isn't it? Hopefully I'm getting these right. I know you're going to crucify me if I'm wrong, and we've seen that one before. Crusty, isn't it? Am I right there? Oh, just for this one, what I'm going to try and do is get a shot looking down. This is the lid of the blender here. I've done this before with another camera, and I destroyed it with a chocolate egg one. I was doing some surprise eggs. The chocolate ended up getting up inside the camera, but this time I put a, a little lens in there um, as an interface. 
and then the GoPros behind it. There's a lot of blue tack there as well, and the grip here is is a uh, blue tack. I'm saying a brand name here. People probably crucify me saying, "Oh, you're doing it to blue tack now," but that's what it looks like, and hopefully it's going to get a hero shot of that stuff getting smashed up. Oh, I ran out of fuel. Oh no! Oh, he's in. I ran out of fuel. Oh no! Oh, he's in. I ran out of fuel. Ah! And now on with this very customized, very rough and ready GoPro fitted lid. I do things cheap and nothing in this place. Have you noticed that? Do you like that? Well, this might be an epic win, or it might be an epic fail. Okay, it's time to fly. <laughs> Well this time I'm going for the super blend, I think it's going alright. Oh, it's looking fantastic! Woo! Okay, I think I've proven a point here. Probably time to turn it off. Oh, boys and girls, do not breathe this. It has the very, very strange odour of dead knockoff planes. And I'll just demount the GoPro because some people were probably confused about how it was set up because I didn't show you what was underneath here. There's a ring of um, blue tack around the lens there. And there's that, what I just a uh, throwaway lens, just an old thing. That I didn't care if they got smashed up, scratched or whatever. That was very important to put in there. Or else all of that um, messy stuff would be taken out. The real GoPro lens. Well one thing I'll say is the Aldi blender has survived so far. I don't have any things I can put through this before it gets taken out. And let's take a look at what we've made. Oh, it's a much finer, refined version than what we did before. And uh, it looks like miniature garbage again, doesn't it? I quite like that. Well, let's survey the plane wreckage from this video. Remembering these were all knockoff toys, and they are dangerous, they are illegal, and they are deadly. So don't get your knickers in a knot just because I'm wrecking toys. These things don't deserve to be on the planet, and I'm sending them to a far better place. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I dare say there'd be some planes fans who've never heard of me or seen me before. They're probably freaked out now. I do this sort of thing every now and then. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now. Well, here are the collector cards. One of them says Skipper. I'm not sure those are the right or wrong names. Oh, that one's upside down. Sorry about that. That one says. <coughs> well, here's a look at the knockoff Dusty. This one. This is the real. Oh, crikeys. <coughs> well, here's the knockoff Dusty. Oh, helps if I hold it up, doesn't it? <coughs> and to finish off the parody, I need to do. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let's give it a pull back and fly, making the clicky sound, and fly! That was an anti-climax, considering you're a jet. <coughs> well, let's give it a push back, making the clicking sounds, and fly! You're totally not there today. <coughs> and here's Dusty, or Rusty, Crusty, 